Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. This is the third part in the video series where we've been restoring and repairing a Lindrum machine uh, that had some water damage. Uh, we, in the first part, we repaired the buttons and the sliders and uh, rebuilt the power supply. In the second part, we repaired the issues with the electronics uh, for the different drum sounds, so now they're all working. And now in this part, we're moving on to the, uh, the programming of the Lind drum machine in this section here. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, that I noticed right away is uh, normally you would uh, use these numbered buttons to select a pattern number. So right now it's on pattern number 00. zero. So I should be able to hit like pattern 11 and, uh, and bring up that pattern number here. But uh, these, uh, these numbered buttons uh, don't seem to be getting a response from the machine. So we're going to open it up and we're going to take a look at that and then we'll continue troubleshooting and repairing this until it's working perfectly. So looking into why the pattern number always displays zero, I, I recorded a, uh, a pattern on program 11. As you can hear here. And I'm going to now jump to 22, so I'm going to press 22 and I'm going to hit play and it beeps because there's nothing in memory at 22. If I go back to 11, so I'm pressing 11, but nothing's showing up there on the pattern number, and I press play, I get the, pat I get the pattern that I recorded. So this tells me that the, the key scanning uh, is working correctly, the CPU is getting the program number, it's just a display issue. So let's open this up and take a look at why it might be having this display issue. So now we know the CPU is getting the correct program number, and we're pretty sure that this is just a display issue. I'm turning my attention now to the CPU output section. In particular, there's a line that enables the output strobe. So when the display needs to change, the output strobe goes low and then data is loaded into this display. So I'm monitoring this now and uh, right now it's high and this needs to go low in order for uh, to change the display state. So I'm going to press a program button and uh, what I'll do is I'll switch the scope here to normal triggering so it'll be really really obvious and I'll, I'll set the trigger level here so it'll be really obvious uh, when this changes and I'll press uh, one of the buttons numbered 1 to 7 and uh, you can see here that there's this little little, little blips uh, so that is the uh, CPU telling the display section to update the display. So at that point it should read the data bus and the address bus and determine what uh, number to load into which display. Uh, so the CPU is correctly notifying the uh, output section that it needs to change the display. So I'm probing the output now of the same chip that I just probed the input of. This is a uh, 74LS138. Uh, it's a 3 to 8 uh, demultiplexer. And uh, the input, uh, which we verified, was the CPU telling this, uh, hey, I have an address and some data loaded for you to put onto a, an output display. And uh, based, on, based on what number we're pressing, uh, we should be loading something into the pattern number display. So now I'm probing the output to that, which is normally low, and when it goes high, uh, it basically feeds the clock of a, a flip-flop or a, a latch, uh, which then takes the data from the data lines and loads it into that latch, which is then displayed on the LED display. So I'm going to press, uh, I'll put it in, in normal triggering mode, so in case something goes by quickly, we don't miss it. But I am pressing the numbers, and uh, the clock for that latch is never going high. So most likely this uh, 74 LS138 is bad. Uh, if not that, then the flip-flop. But my, my first guess is going to be this uh, demultiplexer. So with that chip now replaced, we're ready to turn it on and see if we made any progress. And uh, the pattern number is showing up as, uh, as 1 instead of 0, 0, so that's a good sign. So let's try... Well, it shouldn't be one because there's no there's no zero there's no zero here as an option. So it it should be eleven to seventy seven. So if I try hitting eleven, 
it puts 0, 1. If I try 12, it's 0, 2, and so on. If I try, uh, let's say, 21, that works. 22, 23, 24. Let's try 31. So it, it seems as if, uh, let's, let's just, so that's, uh, so a 1 shows up as a 0, a 2 shows up as a 2, a 3 shows up as a 2, 4 as 4, 5 as 4, 6 as 6, 7 as 6. So they're, they're, it's losing like a, 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 the, a bit of that, uh, bit of that digit. So we, uh, we're, we're, we're closer, but we're not quite there. So I'm going to open this up and we'll figure out what is causing this to display the wrong number. After the chip that we just replaced, there's two other chips. Uh, there's a, a, a flip-flop, which is sort of a, a, a latch or a memory for the, uh, the demultiplex data that stores the number that should be in the display. And that's stored in, in binary, so ones and zeros, uh, a binary representation of the number. And then there's another chip here uh, that it's a, uh, it's a BCD to uh, seven segment uh, display chip. And uh, what that does is it takes the binary representation of the number and uh, converts it to the, the lock on or off for the different segments of a seven segment display. Um, so uh, when I was looking at this, uh, you know, one is being displayed as zero on the display. So I looked at the output of that flip flop and uh, for, the, for the ones bit of that number and it was low or zero. Um, and, it, and it never would go high. So I thought the flip-flop was bad and I, I've changed the flip-flop out already and uh, the problem still persists. So what it most likely is then is the, the BCD to seven segment display chip is uh, shorted and it's pulling the output of this flip-flop down to zero and uh, there, therefore um, we're never getting that, that one bit accurately reflecting in the display. So we're going to go ahead and change the, the BCD to 7 segment display chip. It's a 74LS47N uh, for those of you trying to follow along in the schematics of what I'm doing. I replaced the flip flop at uh, U23 and now I'm replacing the, the decoder chip there at U26. As if this wasn't fun enough, there's a, a very thin gauge wire passing over the uh, the uh, solder pads that I need to desolder this chip from. What I did is I I, uh, I desoldered this on the other side of the board where the wire terminates, and then it, it uh, gave me a little slack so I could move the wire out of the way, and now I can get to this chip to remove it. So now that I've changed out this chip, uh, we'll turn it on. And uh, it starts up with pattern 11 instead of pattern 01. Even though it really was on 11 before, it was showing 01. So let's uh, test all the numbers and make sure that this uh, tens display is correct. So we have uh, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77. So uh, we've resolved this display issue by uh, changing out two bad ICs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the uh, functionality of the drum machine and make sure that I can record patterns and songs. Uh, also, I'm going to put some batteries in and uh, make sure that the, the memory there is working as well. So I've uh, run through the functionality and it seems to be working okay. Um, so I've, uh, I can create patterns. So I, I created some some uh, pretty sad excuses for, for patterns here on uh, 51, 52, and 53. So here's 51. Uh, here's the pattern I put on 52. I can adjust the tempo. That's all working okay. I uh, put a pattern on 53. And then I uh, can switch over to song mode and uh, I've created a six step song out of those three patterns and 
uh, it'll play it back. So don't don't laugh at my uh, my bad drum machine programming skills, but uh, I'm better at fixing them than I am at making music with them. But uh, it looks like uh, the Lin the Lin drum is uh, is back to life, and um, and it can be put to, to good use by someone who knows how to make good music with it. So uh, this is Synth Chaser saying thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video series on the repair of the Lin drum. Bye.